Well, I know all you guys are looking forward to this, so I'll, I'll try not to disappoint. Uh, first off, before I talk about what happened, um, i got to give big ups to uh, Jickalus, Texas Tech fan. Uh, we had a bet, hat bet. I was gonna get it was a hat T-shirt bet. If he won, I'd send a T-shirt. Texas beat Texas Tech last week. God, that seemed a long while, time ago. Okay, uh, and so, but he sent it in. It came in right before the game, so maybe it was a bad look. I don't know. But uh, big big ups to him. He's a man of his word. Uh, got it to me on time, uh, you know, in a timely manner. And uh, man of his word told me he'd get it to me. Got it to me. So that's a guy. If you guys have any kind of bets or whatever with someone, Jickless is a guy you can go to because uh, he demands up for it. All right. Without further ado, let's talk about the travesty that was here in Austin, Texas. You know, um, it wasn't Route 66, but it was probably about as bad, maybe worse. Um, UCLA came into Austin and pretty much slapped Texas around like they were some kind of bottom feeder team. And as the year goes on, we may find out differently about Texas. You know... The one thing I was right about in this game, because I said Texas was going to win 35-7. to <laughs> Boy, was I wrong. Um, one thing I was right about, though, I felt was uh, UCLA's game plan on offense, which was just to pound it, just to kill clock, pound the football. Um, and I felt that our defense would be able to stop that, and they did in the first half, but in the second half, man, that is a, that's a great uh, running game for, uh, for UCLA. They, they killed us. So, yeah, um, for, before I talk about all the problems that the Longhorns have and will have for the rest of this season, you've got to give big, big congratulations to UCLA Bruins. Um, first off, to their fans, you know, just get that out of the way. All you guys who flew in from Los Angeles or drove down to Austin, I hope we treated you well. Uh, you guys were loud for your team. You guys were crazy. And I, <laughs> if I was in your shoes, I would be too. Um, you guys were loud and, and, and support your team well. I uh, didn't see one problem with anybody in the fans. Uh, it was just both both groups, you know, going for their teams. What UCLA did was, you know, in the first half, they couldn't do anything on offense. The Texas defense probably played the best I've seen in a long time, especially with the situations they were in, in that first half. Um, I mean, I think, you know, I think at the end of the first half, uh, Prince only had six passing yards. Uh, I think they had 77 total yards. Uh, and I was right about their first score, though I thought that would be the only score, uh, or touchdown, was a muffed punt that we did at the inside our four-yard line, and they were able to score off that. Um, their other two, I think, were, were turnovers. They didn't move the ball well, but they would kick field goals from that. Um, you know, so on, but what they did was that they knew, okay, we can't throw the ball on this team. You know, the offensive line wasn't doing so hot in pass blocking, and our, our secondary is really good. So what did they do? They got in that pistol formation, and they started switching up the runs. They weren't just doing that misdirection in the first half. They were running up the gut, and as bad as Kevin Prince is at throwing the football, the dude knows how to run that zone read, and he was killing us with his legs as well. And he ended up getting the, 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 the touchdown there close to the end that really put this thing away. Um, the most impressive thing, though, from UCLA was their first drive out of the sec- in the second half. Because it was 13 to three, Texas had just forced a fumble inside our own, um, you know, with UCLA trying almost trying to score, though they're at least going to get three out of that. You know, we were creating those opportunities for ourselves. This could have been a time where the underdog could have been out there and been a little more timid coming in. They weren't. Norm Chow and Rich Newhousel, they 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 changed up the offense just enough to keep us on our heels. And as much as I give credit to this Texas defense a lot, and as much as I want to just destroy this offense right now that was on that was mono e mono that drive that was ucla offense versus texas defense and ucl offense whipped texas defense 19 straight running plays not a single one i think was was uh back was behind uh, the line of scrimmage and kicked our butts killed us on that drive go up 23 right there you know and then I think at the end, you know, this Texas defense really just broke the spirit, but I, I can't give them an excuse on that one. There's no way you can give them an excuse for the Texas defense on that drive. You've got the opportunity. You've been stopping them all game. You stopped them there. They didn't. Congrats, Bruins. Um, now, to the Texas, I don't know if you can call them an offense, at least for today. I want to talk about Garrett Gilbert right now. And first off, I'll say, Gilbert, buddy, you, you showed your age a little bit today. His age showed a little bit. But I am not going to kill Garrett Gilbert for this. There's no way you can. Now, he will get killed. This whole week here in Austin, you're going to have Longhorns fans. Of course, I'm not talking about the people who hate Texas. Okay, the, the Red, Red Raiders, Aggies, Oklahoma, whatever. 
they, I don't care about them. I'm talking to Texas Longhorns fans who are going to call in radio shows, be man or whatever, talking about how terrible he is. He didn't play well today. He didn't. He had he had a, a touchdown pass there when he kicked a field goal to Kirkendall in the back of the end zone, overthrew him. Terrible throw. He, he threw a lot of ducks, uh, a lot of bad throws. But the, the thing was, he didn't have a lot to work with today. Because I want a Longhorns fan on here to put down there in the comments, tell me one guy on this offense that you know for a fact is going to get the job done if Garrett Gilbert gives him the ball. There's not one. There's not one. Um, you know, we don't have a tight end. Barrett Matthews, who I was really high on coming into the year, he couldn't catch a cold today. Um, and our guys, what, what, what really killed us was not, you know, I don't want to, I think we need to give UCLA more credit than that because what UCLA did was they know we can't, we can't run the, the ball for piss. So what did they do? They dropped two safeties back so that we can't throw the long ball. Then they just, they, they, they flood the passing lanes. Okay, because we can establish the run, they're able to defend everything, and our offensive line was terrible, and receivers couldn't catch. I'm not, I'm, I'm not giving Garrett a pass, but what I'm saying, I feel like I need to jump and be the charge of the guy to say, hold up, everyone, don't kill this guy right now. Okay, he, he's not Colt McCoy, he's not Vince Young. Okay, he doesn't have that personality, and that's a detriment to him right now. So he deserves blame, but at no point does this game on him. This game is on every single coach and every single player on that field, including the defense, who played outstanding in the first half. Outstanding. But, and I, it, it gets tiring, and, you wanna, and I do give them a little bit of slack because at a point you're just like you're getting no help from the other side of the ball. But that's where that prize got to come in. And I don't know who on this team. I know on the defense they're a leader. Sam Ocho is the leader of that defense. Him and, and Ke- Keaston Randall and, and Keenan Robinson, those guys – our, our leader in that locker room. But just like the Dallas Cowboys, I couldn't tell you who the leader is on the offensive side of the football. I can't tell you. It's not Gilbert. You know, he's a sophomore. You know, Colt was a leader at that point. Garrett's not. So someone else got to step up. I don't see anybody else. Um, so that worries me about this year. So I would like to send an apology to Oklahoma and all the Oklahoma fans for really putting a, you know, there's no, you know, last year OU was banged up. OU was beat up going in that game against us. Didn't have their quarterback. Didn't have their best tight end. You know, had a lot of injuries, so that was excusable. Uh, Texas, nobody's hurt on our team. Nobody's hurt. We're just not that good right now. We're just not that good. Um, and I'm not going to take anything away from that Texas Tech win. You know, I, I, I will take a win in Lubbock any day. Um, but you got to bring that over to this one. There's no excuse. There's no excuse for losing this game today in Austin. Um and that's on everybody. And I, I, no, I, I don't think anyone has ever heard me say that we're going to win a national championship this year. So uh, losing a game, I was, I was prepared for losing games this year, either next week or the week after that against Nebraska. I, no, I, this was not on my radar. So UCLA fans, all you guys, congrats to your team because you whipped our butts. Um, at this point, this is the time where Texas is going to have to man up because right now we got problems, especially on, uh, on offense. You're staring three and three right in the face right now, because right now we have the two hardest games of the year coming up back to back with a bye week in between them. This is the time where you're going to have to. I want to see these guys if they're really going to step up with some pride, because right now it's about pride. Screw the conference. Screw conference championships. Screw championships. Screw ball games. Screw all that. This is about pride. This is about going out there and rep- representing your university, and. I don't know what's going to happen uh, come this Saturday in Dallas. I'll be there. I'm not, I'm not going to sell my ticket now because we're not going in there undefeated. I'm going to be there, and I'm going to cheer these guys on, and I'm going to hope this team wins. I'm not going to pick them to win right now. But do I have faith this team can turn around? I don't know. This is the one time where I've looked at I've, – I've been making videos where I've seen a Texas team lose – but after almost every loss, whether it be Alabama, Texas Tech, heck, even going back to Kansas State when they beat us here in Austin, it was inexcusable. But that no, at no point in the game did I feel like the team was just like, okay, this is over. We made a lot of mistakes against Kansas State my freshman year because we were trying to win the game. Today, we made tur- we turned the ball over and stuff just because we didn't know what we were doing. And it felt like in the second half, or we got stopped in our first drive, we acted like it was over. 
and that's what bothers me the most about this. Not that we lost. Your team's going to lose here and there, and you're going to lose games you probably shouldn't lose or you weren't expected to lose. But when you're used to a team having so much fight in them year after year, and you kind of see that, it takes down a little bit. I'm not cashing the season in. I'm not gonna sit, but I'm not gonna sit here and act like we're gonna go win the conference. But I want to see something from Texas. I want to see some. I want to see what, what they've got now. It's time to man up here, Texas. And um, I guess uh, we'll see how it works works out. So, congrats UCLA, all your fans. Uh, I was completely wrong. I underestimated UCLA, and uh, you saw what happened: thirty-four to twelve. Um, Nothing but a butt kicking. So, congrats to you guys, all your players, all your fans that came down here. So, Hook'em Horns, Texas fight. Still got to rep them, guys. I don't want to see any of you Longhorn fans leave because of this. Okay, because then you're a coward. If you're going to stay on here and rep this team, you do it all year, even when your team loses. Congrats, UCLA. Hook'em, guys.